one, go. Hello guys, it's Timmy2009 and I'm finally here with another video. So last time I showed off my Gage 1 James prompt replica, but today we're finally going to be talking about the one and only Gage 1 Thomas the Tank Engine replica. So I don't know how long this video is going to be, like it might be as long as the Gage 1 James video because it took like 21 minutes to record. There's just like a lot of stuff to talk about the Mall series, like this is unlike any other thing. So here's Gage 1 and Thomas, like ever since I started the Gage 1 projects, Thomas was the one I wanted to make the most since he's my favorite. Now James was the first character I started off with because I didn't want to be basic. I, I know a lot of people start off with the Thomas the Tank Engine himself. I think the reason why is because of how small he is and how there are some parts that are simplistic about him. Like, he's not a tender engine, so you wouldn't be doing a lot to a, a tank engine. Like, there are a lot of people who actually do make a Gage 1 Thomas. Wait. Sorry about this. Wait. Give me a second. Anyways. The first engine that they make is Thomas. Like, there are a lot of people who have made a Gage 1 Thomas, and I just think it's amazing, like, how, um, people are inspired by the model series itself to make these Gage 1 props. And they are one-to-one -one with the Thomas prop. Like, if mm -hmm. you compare the Thomas prop replica to the actual prop, you couldn't tell the difference. Now, for my Thomas, you probably can tell what's different about the original Thomas prop next to this one. Of course, the face isn't that perfect. Like, this is actually a Railway Series Reginald Payne face, but it does kind of look similar to Thomas's face. I mean, it is still recognizable as Thomas, mm -hmm. even though you couldn't have the actual face. Like, there's a user named Thomas Tank Merch who actually owns the real faces, and he makes resin wow. casts so that people can have their own faces. That's awesome. So it's cool that he makes resin casts. And people do give their Thomas an eye mechanism so that mm -hmm. it can move up and down left and right and they do motorize him and sometimes people do give him a smoke unit so that he can puff real steam like i thought the mall series was cool in a lot of ways like just the way the mall trains look and how they run like real trains now they even have smoke units and eye mechanisms that's cool now there are some instances where thomas has gotten damaged in the mall series like whenever like thomas crashes into something he sometimes gets his buffers bent or damaged, and he does get covered in dirt sometimes, like in Thomas's special letter, Thomas comes to breakfast, etc. However, they do stop filming and they just fix him up real quick, which is kind of cool. Like, I think it must have been expensive for them to, like, actually make the model series, since there are a lot of trains, a lot of rolling stock, a lot of um, accident scenes where they get damaged and they have to fix them, but... I am still happy that these trains did become a reality and the show was still produced. Like, I'm, it must have taken a lot of trial and error to actually make every episode of... Now, for every season that... They did use these models for 12 seasons. They changed to... Wow. Now, unfortunately, they had to use CGI because the, it was cheaper than stop motion and they wouldn't have to, like, worry about damaging the trains and costing a lot of money like i think stop motion is cheaper than model animation but to be honest the model series is actually um, still charming and the cgi series is kind of good for being cheaper Here, than you stop motion. turn around to the back now cgi animation is cheaper than model animation and you wouldn't be worrying about damaging the trains but in my honest opinion i think the model series is still better and it's more nostalgic for me like, the Mall series came out in 1984, and then it ended in 2008. But then the CGI series came out in 2009. Then it died in 2020. But I am still quite glad that the Mall series has um, held up to the fans. And the Thomas community is pretty big on making custom trains and even Gage 1 props. And own fan-made episodes. So, um, I don't think there is much to say about as there is with James, like, if you want to know more, there are, there's a user named Trainboy who does make history videos of these model trains. That's cool. And he tells you about the eye mechanisms and the motors. Wow. And how the models have been produced. Now, one thing that That's does confuse, really cool. one thing that is kind of confusing is that 
This is Thomas' season 1 through 5 model, and then in season 6 they had to upgrade him entirely, like, rebuild him from scratch for some reason. How does it look different? Um, well, there are a few different things, but he does look the same. And in the Magic Railroad, they did use a brass model of Thomas, and they rebuilt him with brass, because it's more sturdier than plastic. Which is the reason why they had to upgrade James's funnel so that it wouldn't break. Anyways, um, now... I love that size. I think he's quite cute. Now, my only issues with Thomas is that his side rods do fall off, like, as you've seen. Mm -hmm. Now, the side rods are actually two separate parts, but you can print them as one piece. But when I first made the wheels, one of the axles actually broke, so I had to reprint his wheels. And separate the side rods so that he'll move better because they did slightly bend for some reason but i think that's because the crank pins weren't lined up properly because mm -hmm. the crank pins are what connect the side rods together and that's how they actually move. holds it in place yeah so that's what crank pins are made for cool but these are how they looked in season six when thomas's side rods did break in some episodes like elizabeth the vintage lori and thomas in the circus did they write that in? Did they discuss it on the show, or you just um, saw it happen? I just saw it happen. I just saw that the side rods that came, did, off. came off. Huh. But he is still quite nice, even so though he does get... yours coming off actually makes it even more accurate. Yeah. I think Bachman also did make their side rods separate parts. Because I did have a Bachman Thomas where the side rods were like bent down, and I had to like mm -hmm. use force to like get it to go straight. Yep. Anyways, um... I think Thomas does look amazing. Aside from that, he still does turn well, but I like these at some point couplers. I do at some point I do want to replace the side rods and actually get him to roll smoothly mm -hmm. so that I can buy some Bachman G scale track and have him roll on there. I might make a motorized version of Thomas with the um, model um, motorized parts from my toolkit. That'd be cool. Anyways, as he does have the coupling hooks, unlike James. I will add James's hooks soon. They're so thin. They're but just like two layers tall. I think the coupling hooks are amazing. Like now, I don't know if I might have actual chains to couple to rolling stock, or if I might use paper clips. But I would just like to get those to couple up to rolling stock. Cause Hobby Lobby probably has miniature chains. I'm currently in the process of Thomas's coaches and Clarabelle, so that'll be nice. And I. And making the troublesome trucks as we speak. Anyways, um, now. The only things that he is missing are his lamp irons and his brake pipes. Like, I know he has those in the show, but I just decided to leave them off. Because it would be more simplistic. Like, I like the simplistic designs of some Thomas merchandise. Even the Lionel G-Scale line. Mm -hmm. Now, Bachman has made G-Scale Thomas trains with the actual lamp irons and brake pipes, but... For some reason, they're bigger than the Gauge 1 trains. They do run on the same track. They're just a bigger scale for some reason. Like, G-Scale trains in general, like, even non-Thomas trains are actually big. So I think maybe that's why they made the G-Scale Thomas trains big. But I never knew how small these Gauge 1 trains were. Like, when I first heard of these, I thought they were the size of G-Scale. But then I did see it. They're in, smaller than G-Scale, right? Yeah, they are smaller than G-Scale, but they are still compatible with G-Scale. Gotcha. And they are still able to have eye mechanisms and motors. Now, I think they changed the model so that they can have smaller eye mechanisms because um, the eye mechs were cramped in when they first made these. Right. So, there so was they not, were hard to work on. So it was very hard to work on the eye mechanisms and the motors and the DC. The DCC coating is what makes every train run independently from each other so they're not track powered. Right. So that shows that they're real trains. Anyways, um, aside from the face being inaccurate, I do like his blue paint. Mm -hmm. One thing that someone did point out is that the paint reminds him of Thomas and the Magic Railroad. I know Thomas is supposed to be like a um, light, lighter blue than this, but he is still quite nice. One weird thing about Magic Railroad is that Thomas didn't have the cab doors. So... Um, it is nice to have that for this one to have the cab doors. Mm -hmm. Even the number one decal looks amazing. I think the thing around the dome and the funnel is quite nice. It's just to show that this is the season what one. What are these? Five. Those are the whistles. They look great. 
Now, I think the whistles are the most important since they are supposed to alert people when the train's coming. Mm -hmm. I know Jane still is missing his whistle, but I will add it soon. Is it the same pattern or is it a different one? Um, Jane's has a different whistle design. Where does it go? On the top of his cab roof. Gotcha. Okay, so I'm going to try to hold these two. <laughs> that James is heavy. Without Thomas's side rods falling off. Now, because they are three printed parts, they are actually light. One thing that I am amazed at is that James is actually bigger than Thomas. Like, Thomas is very small compared to James, which is quite accurate if you have seen the CGI episodes. But I think it is nice to have Thomas in the collection now, and it's nice to have the collection growing. Because mm -hmm. I've got Gage One Edward of making a Gage One Lady. How long does it take to make each one, do you think? How many days? Now, Thomas actually took less than James. Like... It wasn't to the point where I had to stay up all night printing James. Like, I had to sleep during James's printing. Mm -hmm. But with Thomas being smaller, there's not a lot of time to print him. Like, this is less, t this is less, I think it's just more time consuming. Like, maybe less time consuming. How many hours so. was the one that took the longest, the piece? The cab took like 12 hours. This took like 11 hours. Wow. The chassis also took 11 hours, but the rest is just small and takes about two or three hours so it is nice for thomas to be um, smaller and have faster printing than james even though i did um e even though thomas has broken some areas i was able to fix him anyways last but not least is the coal light like, like james i did use fish tank bibbles however on the first go around, I used white tacky glue to glue the coal in, and the coal the glue didn't dry long enough, so we had to like scrape it out with an exacto knife, mm -hmm. and then we had to like use clear tacky glue, which is came out much better. And then another thing is that because these are slots, the glue was actually actually starting to leak out of these. Oh so yeah, I didn't even think about that. I had to like put tape over them. That's a good idea. Yeah. Like, did you have to repaint it after that, or did it? I stick? had. After we scraped the coal off, I had to repaint the coal box because it did get chipped. Gotcha. But I was still happy to get the coal done. At some point, I would like to replace the side rods when I make another Thomas. But it's not too bad. Like, it would be nice to get different side rods just so Thomas can run. Mm -hmm. Honestly, hoping that the wheels don't break again. I did have the idea to use brass rods. So that they are stronger. Like these are plastic three printed axles right. that do snap like toothpicks. But I am still quite nice to have James's axles print right. And James does roll good. Aside from the bogey getting in the way. Tom still does roll but the side rods are my only issue. I think he looks great as a shelf display piece as well. You're at 14. Alright so. That'll do it for the Gage One Thomas replica. It took shorter than James, surprisingly. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you're looking forward to more Gage One prop replicas, then stay tuned for the Annie and Clarabelle and the Troublesome Trucks, as well as Edward. And hopefully more is to come along the way in the future. Slowly but surely we'll have the complete set. That'd be awesome. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoy it. Bye.